Hello, and welcome to Atomic Radio Hour, the show that delves into the records that is post Apocalyptia. I am your host, Vince, and I'm also here with your intergalactic host, Declan. Hello, we're in the same room today. Yeah, isn't that kind of strange? This chair is awful. I'm sorry, would you like to trade? I feel like it's a lot. It's a lot of work. Because now we have to re- refix audio and shit, and I just... I mean, just... We, we can just, like, be on the other side for a change. Come to the other side. No. <laughs> I don't think my, my physician would, uh, would, uh, approve. What's up? What's new? Um, not much is new. I, uh, actually start a new job next week. Hey, good for you. So that's kind of cool. Um, other than that, I'm just kind of packing up my entire life to move. Declan, I'm sick. You're sick? I'm very sick. Oh no. Did you catch it? No. I have a, I have a very serious problem. And this well, is no laughing matter. Well, I'm I'm here to, to support you in whatever way you, you, I can. I've been watching clips of Pawn Stars on YouTube. Oh god. It's I'm so ashamed. It's it's I didn't realize I liked the show. I mean I knew it was only a matter of time. Because I'm 90. Because A, you're 90, and B, you buy old shit to sell. I just, I'm watching it, and I'm just like, oh, they got this now? And it's such for, like, the writing for the show is all, because they, like, all, half of it's fake. Yeah. And I'm just like, it's so awful. But, like, part of me is like, ooh, that's neat. How much is that going for? Oh, dude. Like, you know when they're going to need to call in an expert? Oh, every every clip they call in an expert, <laughs> dude. My algorithm for YouTube is fucked right now. It's Max Mofo Pokemon opening up. Po- I don't. I don't even play the card game. There's just something about watching someone open. Oh, card it's packs. cathartic. It's that, and it's Pawn Stars, and it's Fudge oh, Muppet. My YouTube. They're not Fudge Muppet. It's Mitten Squad. My YouTube algorithm is also screwed up. Because I accidentally fell asleep with my laptop open the other night mm. while I was watching uh, videos on like like video games. And it just went on this tangent of, like, watching these, like, 16-year-old, like, Hey, guys, click here to subscribe. <laughs> oh, no. So now I'm getting all these, no. like, gaming videos, and I'm just like, oh, please, no. I had a phase with Markiplier. Oh, no. Yeah. Like, I have no problem with, like, people <laughs> doing their thing on YouTube, but, like, I didn't want to get into the, like, welcome back to another Fortnite highlight reel. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, that's, uh, do you ever play Emily's Away? No, what's that? It's one of my favorite types of games, uh, massively depressing, mm. where it's a game about a dude who's, like, super into this girl, and they go through high school and college together, and spoiler alert, no matter how it ends, she always ends up not being your friend by the end of it. Oh, that's, that's very depressing. Yeah. It's very it's, in your lane. It's very, like... I like this girl, and she likes me, and we're in high school together, and then it's like, we go to college, and we're at different colleges, and then it's like, something either happens or doesn't happen, and she's upset about it, and then it's like, she just stops answering. That's pretty depressing. Yeah, it was awesome. I think they made a second one, I don't know if they ever did. I think the first one was free, because I have it on Steam, and I don't think I've ever put more than like $20 on my Steam. <laughs> so. I mean, you're a, a console I'm gamer. I'm cheap. Oh, you're well, you're also it. cheap, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you want to you want to get into this lore? Um, I would love to get into this lore. So I've been playing a lot of um, play New Vegas again. Oh, good. Uh, the correct game. And I and I have to say, I've spoken to some people in Discord in general chat, which link in the description to that. Um, I get the same feeling I remember myself getting playing these games when I first played them. Really? Like, I'm like... You're, like, giddy to play again? Yeah, like, I'm sitting there, and I'm, like, excited, and I'm, like, listening to what they have to say, and, like, I'm clicking on... uh, Because what's so weird is how ingrained it is in my memory to open a container is A, find what I want, hit B, leave, or or A, X to take all, B, leave. Because even with four, I would go to pick something up, and... And you would open the container? No, I'd open the pit boy. Oh, right, right, right. it's like, because it would just show you what's there, and you choose what you want. So I would just go, okay, that's what I want, Pip-Boy. Fuck. So it, it's, I, it, I probably I know have exactly like an extra 10 hours on those games, just because it's boop. But it's it's so fucking, like, it's so weird how muscle memory is just, 
It's real. instinct. Like, it is just instinct inside you. So I'm playing it and like, I was playing and I'm like, in Novak. And you can. We said in an episode you can't get the house in Novak. You can. We're stupid. Oh. It's a hundred caps. That's it? It's that, it's that's it. And you have a little house. And I'm not, I don't think I'm going to use the 38. I think I'm going to kind of use that as my main base. Cool. And th- there's a followers of the apocalypse uh, home base that I might get if I do their quests. Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of character are you playing? I'm playing strength. I'm playing Ooh. a strength endurance. I have uh, melee. Neat. So I'm kind of thinking about, I, I want to do the DLC because I've never done a lot of them. So I don't know if I want to do it with uh, a Legion character or an NCR character. Big. Mountain. Big. No, mountain, I know. Big, I know. I know. But I also want to have my, my speech high enough because I don't want to get there and I miss half of the dialogue options. Uh, I know but, exactly what you mean. You know what I mean? So, and I try not to play speech characters when I go back and play a game again because my first run usually is a speech run. Well, because, you're, you're a silver-tongued devil. But I just like the whole, like, walking into somewhere and going, hey, fuck you, I want your money, and then they're just like, oh, oh okay. you charming yeah, fuck. Yeah. So, you dastardly devil. <laughs> so I was thinking about things over and over and over again, and I asked uh, the Discord, um, the special Discord section, only for Patreon members, uh, but there's a link to the descrip- in the description to our, our Discord, uh, and someone brought up Super Mutants. Uh, and I was like, you know what? What could I do about Super Mutants? And I thought, what about Marcus? The Super Mutant that meets you in Jacobstown in uh, in New Vegas. No, I completely forgot his name. It's really? Been, it's been a while. Yeah. Cool. I've been going to Jacobstown since like my first or second playthrough. Really? Yeah. Well, uh, Marcus is an elderly super mutant and the sheriff and the sheriff of Broken Hills. It's a mining town in the western part of Nevada. Uh, it was a haven for human ghouls and super mutant in a relative harmony. Huh. And he's the mayor of Jacobstown in 2281. Uh, after the master's defeat, he wandered the waste looking for fellow super mutants. He encountered a brotherhood paladin named Jacob in 19, er, 19, in 2185. He pl- uh, he pledged... He pledged himself to exterminate all mutants. They fought for days with guns and fists. Eventually, gave up and couldn't because they couldn't get an advantage on one another. Uh, eventually, realized that the pointlessness of their fighting broke down and la- and started to laugh and began a strong friendship. They started to travel together. Man, that's kind of how we became friends. You know, just shooting at each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, they started to travel together, overing over the Unity, which is the uh, Master's plan to turn everyone into mm-hmm. super mutants and kind of go forth, and the Brotherhood's doctrine, and if the Master actually could neurolink his biology to the Cathedral's computer network. Uh, they attached... they uh, Other refugees kind of from that war attached themselves onto uh, Marcus and Jacob, thinking that Marcus's strength and Jacob's power armor was the closest thing to safety. Uh, in the same year of 2185, they founded Broken Hills. The Chosen One helped expose an anti-mutant conspiracy in Broken Hills. Marcus then helped him find the Gek. After Mar- after that, Marcus went back to Broken Hills. Okay, this is all in, uh, this is like the Fallout 2 timeline, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Broken Hills eventually ran out, they ran dry of, uh, of uranium. They were mining uranium. Oh, wait, that's why they had the super sledges, right? Because, oh, I don't know. Because they were in... I think I read this on one of the wiki pages, not to be confirmed, but they were using the super sledges and power fists in the uranium mines, but they would only send super mutants because they couldn't be affected by the radiation. Huh. I think I read that in one of the wiki pages, just, like, from browsing. But, yeah. Sure. It's cool as that's shit, That's really right? cool, yeah. Well, it eventually ran dry, and uh, the it... The entire town was deserted by the people that lived inside of it. Eventually, uh, he reached the Mojave and founded a community for super mutants on top of Black Mountain. This fell apart when Tabitha rallied less intelligent, enclave-created mutants against Marcus and forced him and uh, his supporters out of the area. Now, this is something I never thought of. There are two types of super mutants. There are... Super mutants that are made by the master and his FEV vaults, and then there is enclave super mutants. The ones that suck. The ones, yeah. Like I never put like 
I just thought a super mutant is a super mutant. Don't ever judge a book by its cover, man. I guess, but still. Because uh, the West, the far West mutants are smart as fuck. But there's two different types there. There's super mutants that are, are smart super mutants because the people that were turned into mutants. And then there is uh, super mutants that were by the Enclave that were just idiots because they, they I think it's the master, the master wanted Vault 13, I believe, or he at least wanted the, 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 the Vault Dweller from, from one because he was so untouched by by radiation that it, it would have it would have yeah. given him a better smarter more because i'm pretty sure the fev fev is is military made and they wanted to give it a soldier to turn them into super soldiers they wanted to do a captain america but fucked up yeah yeah uh by by 2181 marcus has found mount charleston uh, founded another safe haven for mutants, named it Jacob Ta- Jacobstown after his old friend. He helps protect schizophrenic Nightkin, and hopes to find a cure with his with help from former Enclave scientist Doctor Henry. Um, There's a lot more there than I remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Here's some fun facts about Marcus. Outside of the Legion, uh, Marcus is one of four characters. To refer to Caesar as Kaiser. Huh. It's Marcus, Easy Pete, Follows Chalk, and Salt Upon Wounds. Really? Yeah. I wonder why that is. There must have been some previous affiliation for that to happen. I I think the correct way to say Caesar in, like, that old-timey Roman thing is yeah. Kaiser. And I think Marcus... Like, Marcus doesn't... He's... I have it right here. He's the most intelligent super mutant in the entire franchise and would much rather fight... Or much rather talk out his differences than fight. He's smarter than Fox. And Fox is on the Fox scale of... a fucking of, genius. Yeah, on the scale of super mutants, he's pretty damn smart. He's also he's also the only mutant in New Vegas, the su- only super mutant in Vegas that has a unique facial model. Oh. I guess uh, he's the only one that doesn't use a leather f- leather strap to hold up his lips. I never even noticed that. Yeah, he always looked weird to me. He looks a little Shrekish. <laughs> a little Shrekish. But here here's another thing that I never thought. But that of. makes sense because of like the. Sh- strain of super mutant that he is yeah i'm trying to think of the fallout one super mutants i know the one you meet in necropolis has it so and he's an idiot i forget his name but he's an idiot and then i don't remember if you talk to any others directly in well what about lily she has it she has she has a the smiley bit yeah the, the fucking leather strap yeah um, so here's something I never thought of with races. I never thought that Fallout had races. Huh. Like, I always just thought it was, you're a human or you're a not. I guess, yeah. So there's intelligent races. There are alien, beast lord, dwarf, ghoul, human, humanoid robot, mole miner, super mutant, swamp folk, synth, and FEV mutant. Can we can we roll back the tape a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, dwarf? Yeah, there's dwarves in Fallout 2. I don't know. I don't know if that was like an Easter egg where you found something that was like a, like a D&D dwarf or they were just small people. Mm. Um, I mean, alien, of course, Zeta, Zaydens. Well, there's been aliens in the game since the first since one. Since the beginning, yeah. yeah. Uh, mole miners are 76. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that one? Uh, Humanoid that, robots? That's like a Nick Valentine. Nick Valentine? I don't Well, he's a synth. I think that's more of like, like um, like, like a, Soltron or something. Okay, or yeah. like Robo Brain. They kind of have arms. Maybe and that's more of just a robot. What would a would FEV mutant be like? FEV mutant is a different type of mutant. There's a, there's a super mutant and there's an FEV mutant. So an FEV mutant a mutant I think is more like an East Coast mutant. Okay, like like the, the centaurs and shit, like the gross stuff. Maybe it is that. I don't fucking know. It was just like, it was like, I never thought of a super mutant as being, because there's, I'm sorry. Yes, it is a centaur. There's super mutant, and then there's mutant. master's mutant. Or, or oh. uh, they're called mariposa mutants, because they were made at mariposa and for better. the master, and, and they're, they're better. They're just better. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's two types. And then 
for unintelligent, we have abominations, feral ghouls, ghost people, lobotomites, marked men, scorched, spore carriers, and the trogs. Lobotomite! <laughs> I'm gonna get there. You'll get there. I'm gonna get there. I know what it's from, but I'm gonna get there. Dick fingers. It's penis fingers. I know, but dick fingers just rolls off the tongue way better. The guy who calls you that, his voice actor... Professor is, Mobius. It, yeah, Mobius yeah. is um, Dr. Venture from the Venture Brothers. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you mentioned that at some point in the past. I'm not sure if it was on the show or not. I probably told you. Um, that's really all I have for the lore. That was that was chock full of, though. It was all right. Felt like a really beefy segment. I mean, it's also... I never get to see your notes directly. Oh, yeah. So, like, I, I just directly? realized how much you have... Oh, dude, look at this. I have pages on, and page Like, these are from when we interviewed Jeff. Look at all of my... Look at the yeah, ASMR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Look at all of my notes from when we interviewed Jeff. Wow. Here's one. And that's a full... That's a pretty yeah, much two-thirds of a page. page. Yeah. Here, two. And that's a full page. Three. And then I have, like, little bits and pieces. And then, like, here, the last... That's the last episode. This is the last episode. That's two, three, four... Five, six, seven, and a half. Wait, I actually need this open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, that's about it. There was a lot more than I even realized. Really? Especially in terms of, like, super mutants having different kinds. Like, subtypes of, like... Yeah, I never... The, the smart boys and the, the idiots. Yeah, I never thought of it as, like, anything other than just, you're a mutant, you're not a human. You're green and smash. And super mutants are eunuchs. Mm -hmm. So that's what I liked about 3, is the super mutants, if you listen to them, they're searching for other humans to make mutants. And that's why they're trying to get to 87. Um, in, in, there's something I read that it was like, ghouls are the, the first and the last of their type. Ghouls, because they become so irradiated, cannot reproduce. Yes. And their stuff falls off or out. If or, you're a man, or something. Yeah, if you're a man, you become a Ken doll after a while. Like, it just off. Oh, God. And I think that's why ghouls are so relaxed, because they don't have constant like, testosterone. Just like, you don't have to be fucking. Yeah. yeah. And they also don't care about a lot of stuff, because they realize that that shit doesn't matter. All that matters is being alive. But, um, yeah, there's there's... In Van Buren, Van Buren, the Hoover Dam was originally going to be a settlement of super mutants. Huh. Yeah, that was them living there, and it wasn't like like oh, the Mariposa Adidas. mutants. Yeah, it was Mariposa mutants that that went from I believe Mariposa is Northern California. They kind of went southwest, and yeah. they kind of settled there. Huh. It was, that would have been something interesting. If I remember correctly from watching a video, I think it was Mantis's video on on what Van Buren could have been. The end of Van Buren was going to ramp up to what Fall of New Vegas' story is. So it was gonna oh. it was gonna kinda introduce that, and then the next game, if I'm right, they wanted to introduce the, the NCR fighting with the Legion. They kinda wanted to just bring it in at the end and be like, this exists. But that would have been cool to have like a like a primer game for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Side tangent: Do you think that's even possible? What? That in current year, mm -hmm. there's some development for a New Vegas prequel. No, we'll never see it. We'll never go back to the West. The I, only the only way we're ever going to go back to the West, and I truly believe this, is if it's far north. Is if it's far north, or they fucking change everything. Or they go before the events of Fallout 1. Interesting. They cannot keep their lore straight. Right now, they cannot keep their lore straight. It would take some serious effort to make it all work. I don't want to complain about them again. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think we'll ever see New Vegas 2 Electric Boogaloo. As much as we'd all love it. Because also, think about it. If you do New Vegas 2 and it's five years later, you then have to decide who wins the battle for Hoover Dam. Yes. Okay. Who wins the battle for Hoover Dam? Are you asking me? No, but I'm saying like like a general statement. You get, you get Mr. House continues to r rule New Vegas. New Vegas never becomes 
the the battle happens fine, but then New Vegas never becomes part of the NCR. It doesn't become a part of. Sh- it's not like how Shady Sands and 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 Arroyo become states. Yeah, it's just kind It'll of. It'll just be this independent thing. Yeah, this independent little piece of land that I need. This yes man little world. Well, that is that is if you Vegas. yeah yeah. Then well, what if I take what if what if and you know that the player character taking over and putting yes man in charge is not going to happen because then you have to bring back a past character, and give him a voice, and well, that's not what I pictured him to sound like, and it's a whole fucking debacle. Right. Caesar comes in, as much as I'd love to see Caesar win, we don't know the legacy of Caesar, and the NCR is spreading too thin. Yeah. Where do you go? Where do you, That's actually a really good question. Where do you go? Exactly. Yeah. So you go so far either north, or you, yeah, you go north. You stay from the Arroyo yeah. area to the top of, of Washington to the point where you're hitting Canada. And you kind of just try to figure it out. And you, 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 little drips and drabs. Oh, well, there was the big battle there. And what happened? Well, you know, it depends on who you ask. Like, that's what they're going to, you know what I mean? That's what's going to happen. So I don't think for a very long time we will see the West Coast. I'd love for them to prove me wrong. I'd love for them to be like, here's a fucking West Coast game. You know what? I would like something that was very interesting like a little thing they put in a new vegas if you kill house you get the pit boy entry like the creator of of pit boy has died that means everyone that has a pit boy knows that house is dead wait what yeah really if you kill house if you go into the shady back room and you just execute his ass you get a pit boy entry like it's broadcasted to your pit boy that robert house creator uh, and owner of robco has perished no fucking way so that's an easy way to, like, really solidly make something canon like the death of House and introduce a timeline. How do, is it a radio frequency? What is it? It, I don't know. It's some kind of frequency or something, but you How get... How do they know? How would the Pip... Wait, that means everyone everywhere that had a Pip-Boy at that moment got that message. That, that, that House is dead. How is there not entire civilizations that are built upon the man Robert House? They have no clue what he is, but my Pip-Boy brought his name to me in the night. That's what like, I'm saying. Like, that could be something interesting. I know this is a bit of a tangent, but this shit keeps me up at night, man. I have to... Now that I'm playing New Vegas again, I have to kill House just to Just see to read the entry? Because that's it's really, really cool. Neat. It also includes a picture. Is that where the picture is from? Yes. You can actually see the picture on the Pip-Boy. Because I've seen that. Yeah. Because not a lot of Pip-Boy entries have a picture, if any, except for that one. No, there's some that have it. In three they have it, I'm pretty sure. I guess, yeah. Well, okay, let me ask you this. How many hours a week do you play video games, would you say? That varies. During the summer, I'd say like maybe like... Three to six. A week? Yeah. Uh, oh, well, oh, a week during the summer. More a than day? that. A day? Three to six a day? No. Oh. No, 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 no. Um, during the summer, maybe like ten a week, say. Okay. I don't play as many games as I as I wish I could. During the school year, maybe like an hour to a week. Well, mm-hmm. did you know if you play video games, you can be diagnosed with a disease? Oh, God. Well, I don't I, want to I, catch it. I shouldn't. I shouldn't say a disease. Maybe what's the difference between a disease and a disorder? Um, I should have looked this up, but I didn't think a disease you now. catch, a disorder you develop. I think. Okay, so or something you're born with, like you can have like a degenerative like disorder. You can be born yeah. with like AIDS, yeah. but you can catch AIDS. Yeah. So is it a disorder or a disease? Um. Well, like you can be born with AIDS, but like HIV and AIDS are. Same, yeah, it's same, the same. It's the same. Same thing, different. different house. One, one thing creates the other. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, what is cancer? Cancer is a disease. Cancer is a a disease. So, what is a drug addiction? I'd like say a disorder. disorder. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's something that develops. I have an article here from CNET.com. Gaming disorder deemed an official illness by, by World, World Health, Health Organization. Yeah. yeah. Gaming disorder uh, lives under the disorders due to addictive behavior section in the in- internal classification of diseases, or the IDC. It's described as a pattern of persistent and recurring gaming behavior, which may be online or offline, manifested by 
impaired control over gaming, incre increasing priority, giving to gaming to extend, extend that gaming takes precedence over others' lives and interests uh, and daily activities. Continuous escalation of gaming despite the occurrence of negative, of negative consequences. So, you let, me could ask, become let me ask you a question. Addicted to gaming. How many? Yeah, exactly. You can become addicted to anything that makes dopamine process in your brain. Mm -hmm. This is not a disorder. If this is a disorder, you know what else is a disorder? Sitting on your couch and watching TV for ten hours a day. Because you know how many people that are baby boomers that are there. There's a that's another group of people we can tell them to go fuck themselves, and they're never going to hear this. <laughs> Who's never going to listen to a podcast? Baby boomers. People without the internet. <laughs> people without the internet. The Amish and the deaf. I mean, the deaf are cool. And also, subtitles exist. I never said... Yeah, but I'm saying... We, okay, we have the YouTube channel, right? Mm. What what deaf kid is at work going, man, this is a banging podcast? I mean, not everyone that's deaf is 100% deaf. There's like the deaf and hard of hearing community no, I know. is widespread. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, but I know what you're getting at. So, what baby boomer is going to read this while drinking their white monsters and waking up at 8 a.m. to mow their lawn and... Read this and go. Well, I told you them fucking video games were bad for you. Like, this is one of those things that gets shared by like Christian mom groups on Facebook to affirm their Christian opinions. Christian moms against dabbing, or <laughs> what is it? Something. Yeah. Like yeah. Christian moms against dabbing. Gee, fucking. Like, I wish you could see our faces. It's just like uh, we're so tired. <laughs> We're dis it's like part disgust, part disbelief. This is why I think what happened in 1983 is going to happen again. For this real? is this is a big reason why because there I think it's in California there is a tax on M-rated games. Is there? Yeah. You so have to pay I've more money for an M-rated game. The the biggest reason why this exists is because gaming right now is the wild west of entertainment in the sense of it's go it's booming it's making more and more money every year and companies don't pay their taxes and it's not super regulated if we're being real yeah like where games need unions <laughs> that's a whole other fucking conversation for another day i know uh but this is just a way like my thing is now if i go home and quit my job and play video games for 13 hours a day can i go get disability I don't think so. Why? I have a disorder. I'm disabled. Let you me would, get let you me would get a fucking let me get a fucking therapy dog and a check from the government every week in my apartment that the government is paying for, and I'm fucking good to go. If you have a heroin addiction, you can go to your doctor and say, I have a heroin addiction and there's nothing I can do about it, they'll put you on disability. And hopefully get you help. No, they don't have to. Why? They're paying me because I can't work because I'm sick because I'm dope sick. Well, the the doctor. The doctor hopefully would do the right thing and, like, help you out and do what a doctor does. Or the doctor can have you come in once a week and the government will pay for your methadone. This is a way to make money and there's going to be people that take advantage of this. I didn't see it from that angle at all. This is... Why? Why else? Why else would this exist? Why is why is not been let me TV? Let, let me let me be clear though. What the World Health Organization deems is not what is legally this, it, they're not a legal body. I understand this. So in the US that doesn't mean dick. I understand this. And I'm pretty sure this was actually created um because of the uh I'm pretty sure this was kind of brought to be because of uh Gaming addiction in like uh, the Eastern Asian market, like people in South Korea, like in you, South yeah. Korea, like a lot of people in South Korea just like can't control it, and like uh, in parts of Japan, people that like are shut-ins and only watch there's anime and play that. games. Yeah, I can't think uh, of the name for it. No, there's another name. Otaku, he, he, he Kokomori, uh, yeah, Kikomori, something like that. Yeah, yeah. There's I was watching something on it. The guy like hasn't left his apartment in seven years. Yeah, and like that's that's a mental affliction. I would say that it's something that has developed from your own isolation of yourself. Ah, uh, I don't know. You could have had stricter parents. I mean, <laughs> it's not only your fault. Yeah, I think a lot of mental, and this is not like me coming at people that are that are diagnosed by a doctor with depression or or anxiety, but I think a lot of mental problems 
are enabled. Hear me out. You following me? Yes. Don't fucking get all crazy with me. I think at a, like a lot of things are developed when you're young. If you're forced out of your comfort zone more as a youngster, and don't get me wrong, there's people that are born with a mental problem. There's people that are born with depression. There's people that are born with anxiety. There's nothing they can do about it. But people that like, I mean, let's not fucking sit here and joke around. It's like cool to be depressed. It's like in trend to be depressed. I don't Type think in so. lo-fi hip hop and look what everything is. I know you sap. Where that fucking XXX Tentacion song? Yeah. It's like cool to be depressed. But like, it's like for trendy. real though, it's not. No, though. it's not. But like, for you to sit there and put on your Instagram a picture of like. I'm so tired, I'm so sad, anime. It's like the cool thing to do. I don't think it's the cool thing no, to do. No, it's not that, no, you're not, I'm not saying that you and I have to sit here and say, yep, that's the cool thing to do. We're not the authority on cool things to do. I've ha- I was the Fallout podcast. <laughs> I'm the furthest thing from the authority on cool. I'm Nega Fonzie. <laughs> <laughs> the, the anti-Fonz? Uh, what the is, anti-Lucio? What is... <laughs> Because he's the coolest. Bizarro. I'm Bizarro. Bizarro Fonzie. I'm digging some of the water. Hold on. Drink your water, children. All I'm saying is that there's a lot of, and I'm not saying that people that have a diagnosed disorder or something diagnosed with them are not valid and don't have a valid whatever. Opinion, yeah. whatever. What I'm saying is this is going to be taken advantage of. This is, this, and like, this makes you and I look bad. This makes... This, because this is this is not like this is the gateway drug in a sense. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me I, out. Hear I me really out, am going to need you to prove this this point to me. Marijuana is not fucking harmful in any way. The only thing harmful about it is that you're smoking something and you should never smoke anything because your lungs were only meant for air. Yes. Yes. Marijuana is not a gateway drug. Just because you smoke weed doesn't mean you're going to do heroin yeah, tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. So this is the gateway drug into demonizing something. Okay, I see your your view. Your, do you understand your what I'm point saying? of view? Yeah. Like like calling something like um like playing too many too much video games and calling that a disorder is kind of opening the door to point more fingers. Yeah. I can, kinda, many, I can see your point. I can your, see that. What's your mom's favorite show? Um, I don't know. Like Fucking Law & Order? Probably, yeah. SVU, many, she loves that shit. How many hours shit. a week do you think your mother has watched Law & Order? I don't know. Maybe. I'll come over and your mom will be like, yeah, I've seen this episode four times. I'm watching it again. That's not, that's <laughs> yeah, not a disorder? Pro- probably like like six to ten. It's not, not a disorder? More. I wouldn't say so. It doesn't interrupt her life. Exactly. Then why is this? Because I think this is for... This quantification is in more extreme cases. This is also, I think, in a lot of cases, because think about it. This is in a lot of cases kids that don't have shit to fucking do. When you were fucking 12, what did you do? You played video games. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I went to school, came home, played, played video, video games, games went, to went, bed. To, went to school again. Did like, my homework, yeah. Like, what do you do? If you're in your 30s and this is a thing that you deal with... Like, there are other problems at bay. This is not a problem. This is not the problem. This, like, you can be addicted to anything that releases dopamine in your brain. Pete, like, okay, I was saying to you, I said to you before in the beginning of this episode, I watch videos of people opening up card packs. Because it's it's enjoyable to watch. It's that dopamine rush. It's like, Because watch. I don't want to buy yeah. a new Keyforge pack. I don't want to buy Pokemon and learn how to play it. It costs and money to do that. Exactly. Yeah. So I watch somebody else do it. It's it's that dopamine rush of it's, buying um, something. Oh, what's that? Uh, what's that? Uh, that word that means doing it in someone's place. In someone's place. Um, Being a voyeur? No, 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 no. It's, um... I don't know. I couldn't tell you. It starts with an S. Like a, like a S sound. 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 Don't. I need to look it up. It's gonna kill me. You have your phone? I do. Because this is this is very loud. Yeah, yeah. It's clickety clackety. There's so many baby boomers that are probably watching six hours of television a day, and like you know what? We live in binge culture. Sorry, this word's really bothering me. No, it's okay. But do yeah. you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like everything's on demand. Everything's on demand, so it's it's like, hey... It's easy to watch 10 hours of Netflix. It's so easy. Did you watch the newest season of Stranger Things? Oh, no, I haven't. I gotta binge it this weekend. 
damn girl, you should get Rebecca over your house. She's a fucking fiend for Stranger Things. I'll come over. I'll bring that Hagen Das. <clears throat> okay, you got Thursday off? Yeah, we can totally bang it out. See what I mean? Like people make a thing out of it. Yeah, like like, like an event. It's it's just it. It's bothersome. I think uh. I think I'm really good at reading people, and I can like listen to someone talk and understand what their true intention is. I also think I'm really good at reading in between the lines. And I'm yeah, really, I, I can say and that. I think yeah. I'm really good at trying to identify when people are trying to take advantage of me for money. And guess what? This is this is I, I think there's some scheme in this. I like I said though, I want to see somebody get on disabil- disability. Because I mean, of this. Why are you why are you applying for disability? I have gaming disorder. What does that mean? I fucking I can't stop playing Quake. Like World of Warcraft is, is just bomb. I know no one's playing WoW right now, but still, like the new Call of Duty comes out next month. I gotta get good. <clears throat> you know what I mean, Mike? Yeah, I mean I guess. What do you mean you guess? Don't just guess. Have a fucking like, opinion. Ah. Uh, I don't know. Like I don't. It's, I don't it's, know how to feel about it. Because in, I can see that this is going to be good for the extreme cases. Okay, fine. But for the generalist population, I feel like it's not going to, A, be taken that seriously. The This uh, quantification, I don't think it's going to be taken that seriously. Really? Yeah. Like... No insurance company in the world is going to cover your gaming addiction. You don't know that. I'm, I shouldn't say the world. No insurance company in the United States. Why not? Why not? Think about it. If I go to my doctor and he says, you're diagnosed with gaming disorder, I need you to come in once a week. I, I'm making jobs. Like, my job, not that I'm making jobs, I'm helping someone else further perpetuate their job. My insurance, or whatever, is paying to... Go to the doctor and make sure I can get checked out for my fucking gaming disorder. Why not? That's a constant influ- influx of money. Just seems a little zany. The end times are upon us. I mean, we're in late stage capitalism. Everything's fucked. Like, <laughs> this is just like, I'm re- I read this and I was like... Vicariously! That's not an S. I know, but my brain said it you was should have said You should have said like a father watching his son at a football game that never got to live out his glory days, and I would have known exactly what you meant. I found the... I can't believe I found the word. I'm so goddamn hyped. So let's bring it back to... Um, let's bring it back to what you were going at. What are you saying about it being vicarious? Um... I completely forget what my thought was on it. I see. I completely forget. I was too hung up on goddamn the word vicarious. Let me ask you this, because you said vicarious, and now it sparked a thing in my mind. I don't... Say I can't afford a PlayStation or a gaming PC or an Xbox or fuck a PS2, mm. right? But I have an iPhone. Okay? Yeah, Hear so me you out. can play, like, mobile games, right? No, 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 you know, you know what the iPhone has? Apps. You know what's a very big app? YouTube. You know it's another very big app? Twitch. What if I spend 10 hours a day watching other people play video games? Do I have gaming disorder? Or do I just, am I a normal part? Am I, I shouldn't say normal because it makes it seem like you're abnormal for having a disorder. Does that make me a non disordered person? Because, well, I'm not, I'm not playing the game. I'm vicariously playing the game because fucking XXX Banana Fart XX69 is playing it on youtube.com slash atomic radio hour where you can find us, which is not. Just subscribe to us, please. Now I need to buy that goddamn... <laughs> I need to register that account. Thanks. <laughs> if someone enters the Discord with that account, I swear to God. No, no. It's it's just just YouTube.com slash Atomic Radio Hour. Oh, yeah, I didn't say XXX no, Banana Fart. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. I just don't think it's going to be taken that seriously. In the, in the, in the end. Like as much as it's like, I don't want to. An do interesting this. news day. It's like I don't want to say this because I'm gonna sound like a fucking asshole, and you're not gonna take me seriously when I say this. Shoot, but uh, you know who didn't take Hitler seriously? Large part of Germany at first. <laughs> uh, this is not the same. 
gamers rising up is not the same <laughs> as the Holocaust. I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying people don't take... People think like, ah, this is nothing. Like AI... I remember hearing about AI and going, ah, this is nothing. And now it fucking, it's taking jobs. Like, AI is not nothing. You know what I mean? It's, it's, this is, this is either going to stem into bigger things. Or, I mean, you know what? I hope you're right. I hope it fucking crashes and burns and we never think about it again. Like how uh, pizza in the U.S. is technically a vegetable. That, that, that's funny to me. But like, no one talks about that. Yeah. I mean, there's tomato. It's predominantly tomato. <laughs> well, there's tomato and basil, so it's fucking. Or no, is it a fruit or a vegetable? I'm not. I'm not, I'm not having this fucking conversation. <laughs> not having this conversation. Tomato is a fruit. <sighs> Shut. No. Fruit gang. <laughs> if you're in the Discord, fruit gang. There's gonna be an emoji. No, Use it. No. I control the emojis, the bitch. You do. <laughs> the only fruit gang I want to be a part of is the avo. Avasquato. Oh, fuck, I was thinking of something clan. Uh, of a clan or something. On the squad. Oh, is fucking... That's, that's pretty lit. That, that's pretty you fucking good. I was going to say lit? I was oh going to say lit, I'm damn fucking, it. What year were you born? Uh, uh, millennial alert. I'm a, I'm a damn Gen Zer. Oh, are you? I don't. I don't know. Oh, let's get some. I don't let's really get care. some. Let's get some avocados in the chat. Let's get some tomatoes. Some squad avocados. Squad avocados in the chat. So, wait, are you advo- are you squad avocado or are you uh? Oh, what's one for tomato? Uh, or tomato gang? I like tomato gang. Tomato gang is kind of like yeah, tomato gang. Avocado. Avocado is good. Or Avis- squad avocado. Nah, avocado. No, avocado. Squad avocado. Mm. They're both pretty good. Avasquato toast. It's just you and your homies hanging out on some bread. <laughs> like <laughs> you, you toast your bread. Your you take your your bread in your hand with avocado spread so thinly on it. Yeah. And toast it with each other. Yeah. To never owning a home. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just uh, this is gonna be a problem. I think it's. Gonna I, be a, I'm I a think pessimist, it's, I, and it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a problem. I, I, I think it ain't shit, personally. I don't know, man. Like, I, I read, I was scrolling through Facebook the other day, begrudgingly, I hate Facebook, and I saw that, and I was like, wow, that's entirely fucking stupid, and I kept scrolling. I think it also, um... I feel like we've got bigger problems to worry about, like no, the Earth dying. we do, we do, <laughs> but I think it also delegitimizes a, a large part of people because of the way that mental illness is perceived in this world. I didn't even think of it from that angle. Like, yeah. Calling gamers disabled. Yeah. Calling people with excessive game tendencies disabled might, uh... Good, but you understand what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Like, you, you've you just... You say what I'm trying to say. You, you've... <coughs> you've delegitimized and marginalized a group of people that, one, are the most avid... Uh, it's the mo- one of the most avid fan bases. I thought you were going to say the most oppressed groups. No, 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 um, I already am going to revise this list, but continue. I can't think of something for two. And then, like, video games. Can I... Can I... The MCU doesn't count because I know. it's 12-year-olds. Can I, can I roast okay. you that a little bit? Sitting on the peak above Star Wars of fanatic groups. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Universe. <laughs> no. Homestuck. No, 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 no. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying on a huge market scale. I know. Yeah, but Homestuck does not even come close to Star Wars numbers. I mean, it's the biggest work of fiction ever written. Oh, Homestuck. I'm thinking of fucking Undertale. No. Yeah. Which is also a subgroup of Homestuck. No. Yeah, but do you understand? To a like, point. But what I'm saying is, like, Homestuck is the biggest webcomic. And it spawned such a massive cult-like following. Star Wars is arguably, arguably, the largest film franchise. franchise. 
video, like, with maybe number-wise, you could say, like, Grand Theft Auto is the largest the game, audience. game franchise because it just made, like, six billion. But a lot of that is DLC numbers. But... Hear me but out. still, it's big. It's big. But I'm saying numbers, numbers wise, you can arguably say that's the biggest franchise, right? I, I can give you that. Yeah. I'm not saying that I agree with that. I'm saying numbers wise, we're the people. I don't want to say we're the people, but like people who play games, I'm willing to spend four or five hundred dollars every six years to get the new console. I'm willing to spend sixty dollars, seventy dollars, a hundred dollars to get the new game. We're guaranteed money. We're money in the pockets. So like you just. Delegitimized. You hurt other industry. I mean, at the same time, the games industry is not the one making this claim. This is some kind of health, but do you or understand? M- mental industry. Okay. Yeah. Some fucking housewife named Karen, whose husband is overseas and is getting plowed by her neighbor, is fucking gonna hear this and go, "Well, that's it, Roger. No more fucking Fortnite for you. You're disabled." This is still a woman who's gonna she's gonna say this to her son and then call him the R word because of it because she read this and because she's not informed and still thinks it's cool to call people that. Do you, you really painted a word picture there. But do you understand? Because this I understand is, this exactly. is how I think about things like this. I understand exactly that scenario. So not only are you now taking away this kid's outlet, you've now insulted him and called him a word at a young age where the mind develops and his entire life is now going to have to carry that, thus putting maybe, maybe putting him into some sort of a therapy, which he then has a harder time to get over because he goes, why doesn't... Why didn't the people in my life love me? Now, I'm not saying that's exactly what's going to happen, but I'm saying that this is, is a, how things snowball. That is a potential scenario. Do you understand what I'm saying, though? Yes. You've just now delegitimized a child's hobby, taking something away from him that could have been a lifelong thing that he could have loved because you were too ignorant to read more than just a fucking Facebook post. This is going to hurt industry in some way. There's no doubt in my mind about it. And it may not be a billion dollar impact. It may not be, well, today in fucking news, uh, Activision's out of business because, I don't know what this voice is, because gaming disorder. It's not, it it could, it might not be that, but how do you know it won't be? Like, it's not a nuke on the industry, but like, it is a gunshot. Yeah. But in other news... (laughs) <laughs> kind of, kind of hard. I couldn't think of a segue out of it. I do like the in other news. I, I think that was pretty good. Cool. Oh, thanks. Yeah. A um, little bit about Starfield. I don't know much about it. I'm trying to stay like mostly. You know in the as dark. much as I know, as far as I know. Yeah, like the cool ass trailer from D3, which just when it was over. Yeah. Um, but it looks kind of fucking cool. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm an absolute asshole of a journalist, which I'm not. Um. We are not journalists. We're just here to talk at you. I did not credit the person for the um, the CNET. Oh, the writer of the article. Yes. Oh, yeah. Wow, I'm an absolute shithead. Don't worry about it. We're all shitheads sometimes. <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. It's no big deal. Fuck crying. Um, you better be. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. Fucking numb nuts. I don't appreciate the way I'm being spoken to. Asshole. It's by Michelle Myers. Thank you, Michelle Myers, for <laughs> ruining the games industry. No, <laughs> she just reported on it. I'm just kidding. She, she's It was probably writer. a very insightful article. She's a writer, and I, that was just a snippet that I took from it. Mm-hmm. She's a writer at CNET. Uh, her article is called Gaming Disorder Deemed an Official Illness by the World Health Organization. Michelle Myers, she put this out on May 26th of this year. Uh, 2019 in the year of our Lord. I was going to say, better be in the year of our Lord. <laughs> so, sorry about that, everybody. But in other news... Dun, 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 dun. Oh. Need to add a little, like, like, <laughs> like news anchor thing. Uh, Starfield. Uh, this is an article from GameRant.com. Starfield voice acting has begun. This is by a Jasmine Henry. Uh, Bethesda job listing seems to suggest that voice acting for Starfield has begun. Uh, this is another snippet from it. Bleeding the edge, or pushing the bleeding edge of RPG de- development for PC and consoles. Another sh- segment says uh, Bethesda is only working on two announced games, Starfield and Elder Scrolls Six, and is still in pre-production for Elder Scrolls Six. That game's gonna take a fucking decade. Which means the voice designer uh, position is probably for Starfield. Most likely won't be released until 2020. Uh, at the earliest, or they'll wait until the PS5 and the Xbox next gen is 
coming out. Now, I hope they take their time. I hope they kind of get their heads out of their asses and really hit this one out of the park. You know when they started doing voice work for Fallout 4? Relatively late in the process. 2013. I'm a liar. Uh, the game came out 2015. I remember the tweet when all of the voices were finished and when the game went gold. I think this game... They, I think they said that they're not going to show it this year at E3. Which I think is a really good choice. I think they're lying. Really? I don't think that they're going to show it. I think they're going to be like, guys, it's coming. And then I think what's going to happen is next year at E3, they're going to... We'll get the announcement trailer. We'll get the announcement trailer and they'll show it to us. And I'm hoping, because it's going to start now and be done by 2020, we don't have a goddamn voiced protagonist... I pray because we're not getting we're not getting the way I look at it is we're not gonna they're not gonna start working on Fall of Five until after Starfield and all of its DLC is done because I believe they started working on Fall of Four as soon as the last DLC for Elder Scrolls came out or I could be lying to you it was Fall? Elder Elder Fall, Skyrim came out and then they started working on it and a group continued to work on the DLC yes okay it's it's more like that setup so oh, don't touch me <laughs> I think it's going to come out. Uh, Starfield is going to come out. They're going to start working on Fallout Five. The way I see, the way I see the plan going, think about it. Twenty fifteen, we had Fallout Four. That was the last main thing. We had the spinoff, which is this year, last year, twenty eighteen, which, which happened. It happened. It happened. And then, but it, let me, in terms of like looking at patterns. 76 is unfortunately the new Vegas of Fallout Four. It is don't. Don't. Listen, listen, Don't. listen. It has I know what you're getting at. It has nothing to do with quality. At. It's kind of like how every third like Pokemon game is a remake to, of a previous region. Okay. It's the the pat- the release pattern. Yes. Main game, side game, main game, side but game. But what I'm getting at is Fallout 4 was five years ago. Yes. Four years ago. We're going She's to get... getting old. We're going to get Starfield 2020. 2023... 20, 2024 at the latest, yes, 2022, six. the earliest, 2122, we're going to get Elder Scrolls 6. I wouldn't be surprised 2021. Skyrim 2. I wouldn't be surprised with, with 2021. Betting more 2022. 2022 or 3. 2023, definitely. Yeah. We will not get Fallout 5 until... 2025 or 2025 to 2028. You know, if the world hasn't exploded yet. Yeah. If we're not living Fallout. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. I would try to find a radio station. Yeah? Yeah. I'd become three I'd want that, to become three dog. That'd be a really fun episode to kind of put ourselves in the thought experiment of what would we do in the apocalypse. Let's let's earmark let's write that, one. that down. Let's earmark write that, that down one. somewhere. Uh, no, I um I just really fucking hope we don't have a voice protagonist. And I hope that we don't have like an M16 in space because that doesn't make sense. I want pew pew laser game. Yeah. I want to see really like in ter- since we have no nothing to go off of, I'm just going to start throwing things out into the void. I want to see some really cool like ship piloting mechanic. Kind of like <laughs> what's that fucking uh <laughs> You know what I want? Hmm. A new engine. Uh, what's the uh, uh No Man's Sky? No, not No Man's Sky. Uh, Elite Dangerous, like real, not as in depth as Elite Dangerous, yeah, but Elite like Dangerous, you gotta flip on all the switches and like that's really cool. And there's an audience for that, like with all the like physical components you can buy. It'd be cool if that was an option. Yeah, but I'd like to see some really cool space piloting shit. Yeah, like um, I hope like the phasers story- and shit, like g- jumping to hyperspeed. Yeah, and like you gotta like buy it. And I, I I love and I never thought of it, but I love space that's dirty. Like, Star Wars has, like, dirty ships. Yeah, dirty space is cool. Like, there's just something really cool about dirty space. I mean, there's two different kinds of space in my book. There's, like, trash floating around the galaxy. And, and there's, then Star And Trek. then there's fully automated luxury gay space communism. Would you like that again? And I quote, fully automated luxury, luxury gay, gay space, space communism. communism. Yes. 
There will fully be automated luxury, luxury, s- gay space, gay space <laughs> communism. communism. There will be visuals for that. Don't worry. Okay. Um. It's a lot to take in, right? Yeah. But those are the two flavors of space. There's shit floating around in the galaxy, and there's that. Like, look at how, like, think of, like, the most utopian space. Like, that's that's fully automated. Everything's done for you. Luxury. Beauty. It's utopia. Gay. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Put your dick in anything. Fully what if you're not gay? Luxury, gay. You, you don't have to. I mean, space, that's where, where we are. And communism. Everyone is always has enough. Yeah, but there's, then there's no fucking... Are you defending communism? No, I'm saying that <laughs> this is what a space utopia could be portrayed as. As communism. Communism is not a good thing. That's because you're, the capitalists have invaded your brain. Don't fucking, don't even <laughs> joke around because I don't even know if you're serious or not. <laughs> don't fucking like... I don't know, just, just go, Com- read, go read some Marxist literature. <laughs> communism works, I'll be the first person to say it works on paper. Yes. But that's, like, that's why I'm kind of messing with you a little okay, bit. Okay, yeah. because, like, yeah, every oh, everybody has the same amount of everything? Great, but fucking, how come the doctor's getting paid as much as the farmer? There are, well, they're both really important jobs. No, I'm not saying they're not, but a doctor is fucking cutting a man open, putting a new piece in him, and sewing him up. The farmer goes, carrots are done. Like, <laughs> there are, and, I'm, and I'm simplifying There are it. bits and pieces. There are aspects of communism okay, that okay. are pretty all right. Like, What? Like, the fact that, like, everyone having access to, like, medical need if you're bleeding out. Like, that's kind of cool. That's okay. I yeah. mean... I'd rather be... You just defended communism. I'd rather be... You dirty yeah. communist. Liberty Prime would be sick. Mm, that's like the fucking Hitler thing. It's like, did you enjoy this painting? You just enjoyed an artwork from Adolf Hitler. <laughs> like, like... I'm just luring you into the communism <laughs> hole just to, like, throw Liberty Prime at your face. <laughs> I'm gonna come in with a fucking Che Guevara shirt on. You're gonna be like, what the fuck happened to you? You're gonna have, uh, the Communist Manifesto in your backpack. I've always wanted to read it. You know what? I had a friend that read it. He said it was a really good read. And he's not a communist. He's not a communist at all. He's one of the most, like, gung-ho America like types that I know who was it oh, uh, a, pers- a person I'll from down. school oh okay he's like he's very like white and like probably well off <laughs> but like <laughs> what a work of fiction as he throws it no but uh he read through it and he's like it was kind of interesting like I didn't agree with most of it but it was really interesting to see this take on like society and how things could be could work I've always wanted to read uh the communi- or the uh, fucking what you just said I've always wanted to read um the Unabomber's Manifesto Apparently it's, like, a little weird, uh, isn't it? There's something that, like, he doesn't make money off of it, so if you buy it, it goes to the... I think it goes to a fund that's It goes to, like, the, the families victims. of the victims. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he, he makes, like, this point in the book, and I'm quoting what I heard fucking Michael from V's Sauce say, but it's, like, he's saying something like, if you didn't have to worry about what car you drove to work to get to your job that you worked at 9 for 5 to... Art would mean nothing. Because you would wake up every morning and go, okay, how do I get enough food to live? And how do I find shelter to make sure that I'm safe? And I'm not saying that what he was saying was right, but, like, think about that. If you boil down humanity to survive and reproduce, yeah. But we're a more complex species at this point. At this point, but he's saying, like, what are we at the root of of ourselves? I mean, look at me. Look at the hair that I have on my, my arms. Like... This is this is yeah, just obviously ASMR that for the for the like you I have more hair on my arms than you do on yours. You like, survive in a colder climate than me. So, but like that's the thing. My entire family comes from Italy, like as far back as we can trace by. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty much a hundred percent Italian. Why the fuck do I have this much hair on my body? <laughs> We're the Mediterranean people. I'm yeah. very white. And I'm very haired on my arms. So where the fuck in Italy? And we're not, we're not, we're not North Italy, which is by Switzerland. We're Southern Italy. Don't fucking say it. Don't you fucking say it. Don't say it. So where? <laughs> stop, stop it, stop it. They have, they have the most inferior pizza. And that's all we're going to leave it at. <laughs> so, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, where... If, if I don't know where I was going on the tangent of me and my fucking hairy ass arms, but like, 
where at what point in time do we stop being animals and someone went you know what i'm gonna put color on paper and that was like give this man a billion dollars because he fucking did that <laughs> he, he did that like you know what i mean like i was yeah. watching something about andy warhol and like they had these watercolor paintings that he did and he, the guy's like oh this one's fifteen thousand, and this one's 10 for like a 10 by 10 watercolor of a fairy i mean i would buy it really just because it's warhol no because it's a fairy you, but you know who isn't a fairy shane ivers <laughs> we don't know that but you shane ivers is a human oh yeah fairies you're right. are fucking mythical beings just like fucking me. idiot. Shane Ivers, he made our wonderful intro music. If you want to get Feather Duster, which is our intro track, but don't because it's ours, uh, that is uh, at www.silvermansounds.com slash free music slash Feather Duster. But sir, mm. where can the viewers there at home mm-hmm. find the show? If you'd like to find the show, you can find us on Twitter at... Atomic Radio Hour. You can also find us on Instagram at the same name. You can find myself on Twitter at the underscore Boogans in all caps. But what about you, my good man? You could find me on Twitter at Declan underscore Bean. But Vince, yes, I really want to start a conversation Discord. with you. If you want to join the Discord and join the conversation with us, talk about Fallout, talk about communism, you can hit that link in the description below to join our community. We also have a Twitch. It's uh, twitch.tv slash Atomic Radio Hour. It it, it exists. Um, (laughs) We also have a Patreon. The show is always going to be free. You never have to give us any money. But if you want to see the show get a little bigger, a little better... You can throw us a couple bucks. None of it is mandatory. Uh, but we have some people that we need to thank for supporting us on Patreon. Those people being Michael Mello, the Friendly Companion Cube, Noah, and TKS Mantis. Thanks, thank guys. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for delivering currency to our inbox. You proud of that one? You like that one? It was okay. You think it was, pro- you think it was needed? I could probably do better next time. You, I mean, I would hope you never did that again. <laughs> now I'm going to do it every episode. <laughs> I was going to cut that out, but I'm going to leave it in now. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything written for this week. I've been super busy. Do you have anything written? Uh, nope. I'm moving back to school. Yeah. So. Um, I don't know. I have uh, I have some stuff on backlog that I can upload for times like this. Yes. So enjoy whatever that is. Uh, do you have anything else before we go? I would just like to say thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you. Do you have any memes you want to say before we go? I do. Yeah. If you would like to join the uh, utopia of, of fully automated luxury gay space communism, make sure you... Uh, you join the uh, tomato gang in the Discord. Do I need to really explain to you why Avasquato is fucking... I came up with a name. Yeah, you came up with a name, but fucking... Not the ideal. (laughs) Avasquato's where... Goodbye, everybody. (laughs) Hello, tape log of Detective Dixon number 51. Archibald the Big Chief Swanson. What a joke of a criminal. He tried to run girls out of his mother's basement. I once saw him trying to get a refund for some bad jet that he bought. He gave himself the nickname of Big Chief. Is He gave himself the nickname of Big Chief. Is this why I got into being a PI? Track down a man-child that can't even solicit his way out of a cardboard box? I guess I'll head to the Muddy Rudder and check out some leads on The Big Chief. Atomic Radio Hour Podcast.